Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Ether Bitcoin valuation. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel in the description below. So what we're looking at here is the Ether Bitcoin valuation on a logarithmic scale versus time color-coded by the risk metric. And this risk metric is what we use to help identify momentum shifts in the market of Ethereum to Bitcoin and Bitcoin back to Ethereum. Now, this is not the only tool we use. If you guys follow the channel, there's a lot of other tools, uh, one of them being just looking at historical moves of Ether against Bitcoin. Other other ones looking at is how, how inflated is Bitcoin at the time? Is the risk level on Bitcoin itself very high? So we have a lot of different tools, but I want to present one tool in this video, and this is the Ether Bitcoin valuation as and color-coded by the risk metric, which goes from zero to one. So historically, when it's down here, you know, between say zero up to 0.2, this is historically a great time to buy. And as you get closer to 0.5, it becomes, uh, it's still a good theoretical time to buy, but, but it's not as clear as it is when it's down here. Um, in the same manner, when it's above 0.5, you could say that it's a theoretical time to move from Ether back to Bitcoin. Um, but then again, it's still not very clear because there's still a, a, a long way to theoretically go. Now, if you look at the history of Ether versus Bitcoin, the risk metric has it going all the way up to the peak here in early 2016 and here in the summer of 2017. You might look at this and say, well, hold on a second. Why is the one in 2018 not going up to one? Because we know that that's when Ether peaked at $1,400 or so. Remember, this is not the Ether USD valuation. It's Ether Bitcoin. And Bitcoin had gone parabolic ex itself recently. Therefore, the risk of Ether against Bitcoin was not as high because Bitcoin had also gone parabolic. During times like this, in early 2016 and the summer of 2017, Bitcoin wasn't really going parabolic itself at that point. So because of that, the risk of Ether against Bitcoin at that time was higher. For instance, if you say you had converted your Ether out to Bitcoin at this point and then bought it back later, you would have ended up with a lot more Ether. The same thing would have gone um, looking at this because it allows you to get out of Ether at the local top to ride Bitcoin's parabolic move, get back into Ether at the local bottom or thereabouts, and then ride it back up. Now, the issue, of course, is while well, this one did not go all the way up to the peak. So how do you handle that? And we're going to talk about that in a second. But you can see that it, it goes from zero to one. And, and typically, we'd want to split this up into something that we can easily digest. So we can look at the prior or the Ether Bitcoin valuation. And then this time, we're going to put the risk on the secondary y-axis. So you can see these two moves went to the 0.9 to 1 risk band. This one only went just over 0.6. So what we could do is say, well, let's break this up and, and look at, at some of these risk bands. We might first say, let's just suppose that it's a buy if it's below 0.5 and it's a sell if it's above 0.5. But how do, you, how do you time this? Do you sell everything at this point? Do you, you, know, do you go all in at this point? The general idea here is you can do something that I like to do called dynamic dollar cost average, where you're selling more as it goes up the risk levels. So for instance, suppose you had 15 ether, you could split it into 15ths. So let's say here you're selling one ether, here you might sell two, three, four, and five. So it adds up to 15 ether, but it saves converting the most of it at the higher risk bands in case you get there, while also allowing you to take profits if it, if it actually doesn't peak nearly that high. Now, it's not always the best idea to have the buy band um, you know, coincide exactly with the sell band, because if it gets to that point, you might be flip-flopping every other day. I've often said, you know, you can use a gray region if you don't want to be as hands-on with the market. You could consider maybe between 0.4 and 0.6 to be more of a gray region, and and you could treat this indicator in in terms of this as as you know if it if it gets either down to this region or up to this region, then it's a clear signal. Um, and if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that this is not a, a signal to to move back in. It just means you need to use other other methods, and we've done that, right? We we looked at the uh, a lot of stuff with Ether Bitcoin over the last. Um, few weeks and we're, we're calling, you know, saying that we think there's a momentum shift coming for Ether Bitcoin, even though the risk is not necessarily getting back down to 0.4 because we might just be in a bull market for Ether against Bitcoin. Um, and, and the risk might just continue to go up for a little while. So 
we can split it up like this. And if you notice, there were two points where it went up to this level, one being early 2018, one being um, this past summer. And by doing it like this, it gives you the opportunity to, to, you know, to look at it and say, okay, we've reached that 0.6 risk level. You might consider taking some profits. Now, I would not consider going all out of Ether at this point because you might be leaving a lot on the table, especially if the risk were to go all the way back up to the 0.9 to one risk band. Therefore, what you could do is sell one tenth of the ether, split it up into tenths. So one, two, let's say you had 10 ether, you could sell one here, two here, three here, four here, sell it back to Bitcoin. That way you're, you're more or less timing that momentum shift in the market. So for instance, if, if ether Bitcoin were to rally to the 0.6 risk level, you might consider um, selling, not that this is financial advice, but one option that I like to do is would, would be to sell say one tenth of your ether and it could go back to Bitcoin if you want that continued exposure to the market. It's not always black and, as black and white as that because it might also depend on what the risk level of Bitcoin is with respect to USD. For instance, imagine one day the ether Bitcoin risk is at 0.99. If, if Bitcoin risk is at 0.99 itself, that doesn't mean you necessarily want to convert back to Bitcoin because that implies if the Bitcoin risk against USD is also high, it implies there might be a, a impending crash. And if that's the case, it would make more sense to flock to, to stable coins or, or fiat. Um, so it's not always black and white, but it does. it's just one more tool that we can use to identify these momentum shifts in the market. You can also see there have been these two peaks that took us all the way to the top. So by just following a dynamic DCA approach, it allows you to sell some at lower risk levels while we're still somewhat playing in the sandbox, taking some profits in case it comes back down, but also leaving most on the table so that if it does continue to go up, you're going to reap the benefits of that. So um, I hope that makes sense. Now, one of the things I, I will I will say is that if you're if you're curious about this, we do we do publish videos on the public YouTube channel that you guys are watching now on the risk metric for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few other coins every every couple months or so. We'll probably do a Bitcoin one soon. But um, if you guys want access to this live and and want to know kind of how I'm using it day by day, sometimes hour by hour. Uh, just to look at updates, then remember to check out the premium list. We are having a Black Friday sale. It will go on for about a week and a half longer. So check it out. You can you can get grandfathered in at the at the discounted price perpetually unless you cancel. But in a week and a half, the price will be going back up to the normal price. You can find a link to the Black Friday list or the Black Friday sale in the description below. So I'd encourage you to sign up. You get access to the weekly reports the weekly videos that I do just for the premium list. This most recent video was almost an hour long and it was a recap of all the materials on the premium list. So this would be a good time to, to get in and, and watch that video. You also get access to the alerts channel on Telegram, the private Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, which has these metrics quantitatively in it and provide actionable insight, and also access to a dynamic TCA selling dashboard, as well as some of the trading view indicators that I've made. So you get access to a whole lot of stuff. I would encourage you guys to check it out if you're interested in that. And if you, one one thing that, um, you know, we've talked about doing a lot recently is also splitting, you know, that not everyone wants to sell everything the minute you get to 0.6 risk or, you know, war if it's in USD. So you could split these bands up even further if you want to really squeeze out every ounce of profit if you want to push your risk a little bit higher. This is also a fun chart. It just shows the Ether Bitcoin valuation versus the risk. And you can kind of see these, um, these, this pattern, right, of coming down, going back up, coming back down, going back up, back down. Now I think we're going to be coming back up. And you can see that as we continue marching through time, the Ether Bitcoin risk over the macro scale seems to be trending up. But of course, the risk level readjusts every cycle. That's the nice thing about them, the risk levels for a given price are dynamic. They don't just stay constant at that price forever because that implies you can never you can never really move up. This is the Ether Bitcoin chart. This was another one we, we've been talking a lot about on the channel, identifying this hopeful momentum shift. It's not clear yet, right? It's too, I would say it's too early to call a true momentum shift, but if it does rally, then that could get us to that 0.6 risk band that we talked about. Um, and, and one thing that I, I, I showed um, uh, earlier, or I, I showed some people earlier, was the idea of rotating this chart and looking at it like this, and it helps better identify this fundamental momentum shift 
of the Ether Bitcoin valuation, right? I just took this chart and I rotated it. So coming down, complete, like basically a right angle here going on a, on a completely new direction. You can kind of see coming up and back down and then up, down, up, down, up, down. Hopefully this is back up to the top of the band over the next few months. We do know that Ether tends to perform Bitcoin in the coming months, historically speaking. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Remember, if you guys like the content, subscribe to the channel. Let's try to go for 60,000 subscribers. We have a little ways to go to get there, but the channel has been exploding recently in terms of subscriber count. So let's try to get to 60,000. Give the video a thumbs up. Remember to check out the Black Friday sale in the description below if you guys want access to the risk metric. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.